hey. How's my favorite little regular customer on this hot summer night? You feel that south wind blowing up Saginaw Highway? Oh, hot and dry, smelling like the smog that usually stays way down in the valley. Means it's gonna be a scorcher. So, make sure you stay hydrated tomorrow, you hear? Rough day, huh? I suppose I can relate. I admire you for sticking it out, though. For what it's worth, I never could myself. Never took the work in. Not paid for it. I'm surprised you don't have anywhere better to be. <laughs> what I wouldn't give to be your age again all alone, just before sunset in the dog days of summer. Are you sure there's no pretty young thing out there just waiting on you to show up at their door and ask if they're too busy for a little dancing? No, girl. A boy, maybe. Not that either, huh? Good little looking thing like you with no place better to be than my little hole in the wall bar. Makes me wonder what you're really after. And I don't suppose you're here after my pretty face either. Drink up, kid. It's on the house. Finish it up and leave. Don't come around here no more. Don't give me that look. It's not anything you did. Listen, you're a good kid. I see it. And you don't want to hear this. But you're innocent. Pure as fresh fallen snow. And I'd kill to get half of that innocence for myself. Now I know you figured out all my regulars are criminals or ex cons, and they come in here to take a load off. Or sometimes talk shop. I don't care about them. They're all too far gone for someone like me to be able to pull them back, but I can stop you, at least. This ain't a place for someone like you. So finish your drink and leave. You know, you remind me of a younger me. The dissatisfied, disillusioned, ambitious young blood who felt like they weren't going to get nowhere in life unless they were willing to take some serious risks. I spent a lot of time in a place just like this, trying to rub elbows with the people I looked up to. And I tell you what, you don't want to meet your heroes, kid. I told you all the stories before, but what the hell? Let's have a refresher. Took a while, but I got in. And I was pretty good at it. In fact, I was real good. There was a time not too long ago I ran this whole neighborhood. Ran the numbers game for a while. It was safer. But the returns weren't quite the millions I dreamed of, so I had to move on to more dangerous things. Turned out, I was pretty good at that too. Too good. A lot of people got hurt. Need you to understand that. I mean it. I hurt people. A lot of people. More than I ever got punished for. And he got me what I wanted. Money. Power. Respect. Couldn't last, though. You never be on top all the time. It's always someone coming for your spot. The sheriffs and stadies couldn't touch me, but... 
I got a little sloppy with my money. And <laughs> wouldn't you know it, revenueers locked me up. It's typically how it goes. That's how they got old Al, too. Spent ten years in Terre Haute. Eight behind bars and two working at the baking powder factory. <laughs> when I got back to Tuner Flats, everything I'd built was gone. All my contacts, all of my business, my friends. All I had left was this building. Never even been inside it before. I just, I used it to launder money. Do you ever spend time in any prison? I know you're aware it's not a fun time, but do you really know what kills you? It's not the gangs or the guards. It's boredom. Time creeps by and slips away from you. Passes by so slow, it's like trying to carve your name in dry cement. You try to keep your feet on the ground, but you can't all the time. Get up in the morning at 6, get counted at 6.15, eat your oatmeal at 6.30, grab a full 8, assembling office furniture for the feds. Two hours of rec time outside if you're well behaved, inside if they don't like you. Eat dinner, green jello on Fridays, red jello every other day. Bed inspection. Choose between the library or the movie. Go to your bunk, lights out. And then wake up the next morning and do it all again. Ten years. I went mad for most of year four. Came back around to something close to sanity in year six. I ain't never really fully recovered it, though. I can't complain. I deserved it. A lot of people have been in there a lot longer for a lot less. Here, why don't you try something? The brand of chips they had in the canteen out there in Indiana. Can't normally get this brand outside of the prison, but I pick up a few bags on eBay every now and then. So I find uh, I have a craving for it. They're flavored with whatever flavor dust the day shift that the chip factory didn't use up, so they got a lot going on. Try a couple. Kind of gross, right? Way too much flavor, and it all clashes weird. It's like licking the floor of a Dollar General. But believe me, they hit a lot different when you're wearing orange and black. So when everything feels and looks the same day in and day out, you start craving things that you wouldn't. Sensation. Any sensation. This absolute overload of flavor felt like heaven. Closest I ever saw to a riot was this Saturday. They opened the canteen without a fresh stock of these. You go more than a little crazy in there. Just looking for anything to silence that steady drumbeat of monotony. Got really into the Twilight books when they were coming out. I know somebody spent a long time in solitary. Spent their time touching cold metal. Waiting for it to get warm, letting go, and touching it when it got cold again. Anything to break the void. And they wonder why it's so violent all the time. And when I look back at those two years when I was on top of the world, they weren't worth it. And weren't worth my time in Indiana. I don't want to see you make the same mistakes I did. Hell, my daddy won't even talk to me now. 
He was a nurse down at the VA clinic on Cleveland Boulevard. I know it's closed now. I think they tore it down and built Costco. But back when I was a kid, it was still seen as emasculating for a man to take a nursing job. It's a woman's work. He was good at it. He paid enough for him to raise me on his own after my mom died. I still felt ashamed of him. I was cruel to him. He was a good, an honest man, and I spent my childhood ashamed of him. And then I threw away everything he ever gave me because I wanted to be a big shot. Tried to visit him the other day. He lives in a trailer park on the other side of the old Highway 9, down in the valley. I could see him in there, sitting in his chair, watching a hockey game. And he could see me. I knocked. We made eye contact. But he never got up from his chair. I suppose I'm dead to him. I don't really blame him. Just wish to God I wasn't. <laughs> so you finish that drink and you leave. And if I see you around here again, I will break both of your goddamn arms. No, you're not in the market for a life of crime. Why you come around here then? I don't mean that. I know it's not for my drinks. I can't mix a fucking cocktail to save my life. And I know it's not for the company. What, you a cop or something? My stories. You pulling my leg. I'm just old and full of shit. Next thing you're gonna say, you got some kind of crush on me. No. No. Oh, God damn it. You kidding? <laughs> what in the name of Peter and Jane is wrong with you? Look at me. I got a decade on you. I got grays in my hair. I'm getting crow's feet in my eyes. I got wrinkles where I shouldn't be getting wrinkles just yet. I got calluses on my hands from prison shop, and I got dark circles around my eyes that won't go away no matter how much I sleep. My hands are cold, and my face is sad. Little kids cry when they see me at the grocery store. You deserve some passionate young thing with stars in their eyes. Mine are empty and tired. I don't have the passion in me anymore. Hell, I don't even do nothing no more. All I want to do at the end of the day is make myself some oatmeal and watch a rerun channel. You can do better. You can do a lot better. I really can't talk you out of it. God damn, who am I to deny you the right to make terrible choices? You can't say I didn't warn you about me, you damn fool. I'll tell you what. Place is dead tonight. It's just you. So what do you say we go dancing, huh? And I got one condition. You stop hanging around here. If this works, it works. We'll hang out someplace else. And if it doesn't, I don't need you floating around here like a sad little puppy. Got it? Good. Now go back home and clean up a bit. I'll go upstairs and say, tomorrow night at the Falcon's Lodge. 
I haven't danced in ages. I want to see if I still got it. We'll see where that south wind takes us from there. And I will see you in an hour on the dot. If you panic now and you stand me up, I will find you and I will break your legs.